Hi everyone, it's Elise. We're going to be going through a short tutorial on how I would go about making a rhythm game such as Guitar Hero in processing. Um, and this, this video might be a bit long, but I'm going to go through every step and hopefully explain everything as best as possible um, in order for you guys to understand compound data a bit more. And this will rely on knowledge such uh, from before with functions and loops, so if you don't understand that stuff, then probably go back and do that first so you can get the most out of this video. Okay, so I'm just going to start with setup and draw. Um, and the first thing I want in my scene, so obviously let's, let's set the screen size first. So um, it's going to be quite tall and skinny. So I'm going to say 250, 600. All right, the first thing I want in my scene is the strings. So this is kind of like the paths that the beat uh, is going to travel along. Um, if you if you know other rhythm games, uh, then you'd be familiar with this. But if not, then sit tight and you'll see. So I'm going to determine the positions of those. Um, I'm actually like predetermining them, and I'm going to put them in an array. So it's just going to be an integer array. So int array. I'm going to call that um, strings. Maybe like string x. So it's going to just store the x position of where along this window I'm going to position each string. And I'm going to have an array that contains the values 50, 100, 150, and 200. Now the reason I'm putting it in an array instead of um, initializing them in setup with, with like a loop or something is that maybe I want to change these after and have the outside ones a bit closer together. But so I might, at the moment, they're evenly spaced out here, splitting the whole thing into fifths. But in one case, maybe I wanted to bunch them all up over here. In that case, I could just change the values of this to equal something else like 70. But for now, it's a good start. So what this means is that we now have this array that is split up into four blocks. The first one's going to have 50 in it, the next one's going to have 100, and so on. Um, and these all have indexes of 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So we'll come back to that, just keep that in mind. Okay, uh, let's give it a background color as well. So let's start off with a black background. And I'm going to copy and paste that and put that at the start of the draw as well. Now, to draw the strings, let's create a loop that's going to loop through our x values of the strings um, and just write lines at that position. So, start off with our basic loop, int i equals 0. Remember, you can use any name here, but i is just standard. i is less than string x dot length. So, we're taking what is the length of this array at the moment? It's 1, 2, 3, 4. But we don't want it to ever reach 4 because the highest index is 3. So that's why we have less than and not less than or not equal to. Um, and then we have i++ because we, we want to go through every one at a time. And for those of you who are struggling with uh, iterating through an entire array, um, I would really recommend just memorize this formula for now and then spend time understanding it later. Basically, we want to start at 0. We're starting at the very first index. We want to keep going until we re reach the end of it, and then we want to go through one at a time. Okay, so we're going to write line. Uh, what's the x value we want? Well, we actually have an array, a very handy array, that contains our x values for us. So string x i, so the first time it's going to be 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and it's going to go through all the values. Um, the y value will be 0 because I want it to start at the top of the screen. The next x value of the second part of the line is identical to this. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I've been talking too fast. <laughs> uh, what a workout. Um, and then the last part of the line is height because I want that line to go from the top to the bottom. Um, and I actually need to give this a white color because it's on a black background or we won't be able to see it. Two, five, six. and I cannot see it. Two, five, five. There we go. <clears throat> My bad. 
Okay, so now we can see our lines. Actually, let's make the lines a little bit thicker. So in here, I'm going to say stroke, uh, stroke weight, uh, three, just to make sure they're a little bit, a little bit easier to see. Okay, cool. So we definitely got our lines now, and they are positioned according to these positions in the array. So um, I can actually just change this one. So if I wanted this one to be 70 instead, this one moves over. Um, and we might use that a bit later just to change it up a bit, but uh, let me keep that at 50 for now. Okay, so what do I want to do next? Uh, let's put some buttons in. So for the buttons, I'm also going to have an array. I'm going to say button, oh sorry, uh, it's going to be a boolean array. And that's because we want to store just true or false values that are going to store if the button is being pressed or not, if the button's down or not. So boolean array called buttons. I feel like buttons is fine. Uh, maybe like, hmm, I'm not sure to do plural or not. Because if, if I say like button one, then you'll know it's the second index. But if I say buttons at index one, oh sorry, not I, but you, you, know, you know what I mean. Um, then I think, I think buttons is the right terminology here, but you guys can do whatever you feel is best. So let's make that equal an array of all false values. Okay. Um, and again, I could have a loop inside setup that just initializes this for me, but because I know all the values and there's only four of them, I just feel like it's easier for you guys to see here at the moment. Okay. Um, and what I want to do is I want to draw all the buttons as well, and I'm going to have them centered at each of these points. So not something I would usually do or encourage really, but I'm going to say rect mode center just to make the coding a bit faster. So what break mode center does, I'm pretty sure you've used it a bit earlier, but you can, uh, instead of drawing the rectangle from its usual spot zero, zero here, um, you actually end up drawing the rectangle um, from the middle where zero, zero is the center. And what that's gonna allow me to do is that if my string position is 50 here, then it's gonna be exactly at 50. So let's do that. Um, so I will have a for loop that's going to go through all the uh, buttons. Well, the, again, it's going to be the expositions of the strings because I'm going to have one button per string. So that's why I'm going to iterate through um, the string again. And the reason I'm not doing it in the same loop is because I might like it, ordering of positions in the screen. I might want to have our beats go above the line, but below the button. So I might have like, you know, code for the beats in here. And then after I want to draw the buttons. That's the reason I'm doing it in a separate loop. Okay, so for int i equals zero string. Oh, I guess I'll I guess I'll do buttons. Buttons. Um oh, sorry, i is less than buttons dot length. Now string x and buttons dot length are exactly the same length, which is convenient, and you'll see why. I'm gonna do some shortcuts. Um i plus plus. And in here, I want to say, I want to draw a rectangle um, at position. So remember with rect mode center with a position that zero, zero is in the center of the rectangle. So I'm going to say position string x i. So we're taking the index of this one to determine the x position. Um, the y position, oh, let's, let's create an integer for that. So int button y, buttons y, equals, uh, let, let's, let's make that one like four-fifths of the screen, so buttons y equals height times four over five, um, then we can use that in here, buttons y, um, and then how wide do I want it and how tall, let's do 40, 40 for now. Just to test it out. Um, yeah, so the reason that I can use strings x here with the index i, even though I'm using buttons.length to loop through, is because I know for a fact they're exactly the same. Now, if they weren't exactly the same, you're going to get an, out of, an index out of bounds error um, if string x is smaller than buttons. So be careful when you use this kind of tactic. I'm only doing this because I know that string x and button x are exactly the same length. Um, 
or the buttons arrays. I know these are the same length. Okay, so let's test that out and see if we can see rectangles. Perfect, I can see rectangles. Um, I want to be able to press some buttons to see them move. So let's let's add in some input. So we're going to need void mouse, sorry not mouse, key pressed. It would help if I could spell key right. Void key pressed. I think that's supposed to be lowercase. It is. Okay, void key pressed and I'm going to need a void key released. Because not only do I want to check if my key is being pressed down, but I also need to check when it's being released so the button knows when it's no longer being pressed down. So I'm probably going to do something like if key, now key is a keyword, it means the last key that's been pressed on the keyboard. So if the last key that I've pressed is equivalent to the character Q, what I want what do I want to happen? I want I want buttons false on that index. So this is, if this is Q, this is W, this is E, this is R on your keyboard, um, then if that one's pressed, I want buttons at index zero to now equal true. Um, and we need something to see if, you know, how do we know if this has worked or not? Let's, let's just change the color of our button. So for that button, um, if buttons I I could say is equivalent to true, but this will evaluate to true or false anyway, because it's either true or false. So if it's being pressed, I want to fill up the color with black. Okay. Oh, it's filling up all of them because I didn't set a, another color. Um, else, let's fill with white. Okay, cool. So I can press down Q and it's now going to change color. Um, now we're going to need a released. So if the key that was released is Q, then we want the button to now equal false. And that way we can get something where we can click like this or hold it down. Cool. Let's do that for all the buttons. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So for the next one, we want it to be 1 and W. Uh, not two W. Next one, we want it to be the letter E and the second one, so Q, W, E, R. And the last one, we want it to be R with the th third and final index. And I'm just going to copy and paste this again and change all of these to now equal false. So now if we test it out, we should get buttons we're able to press. Hey, that's pretty satisfying. You can probably hear my clicky keyboard in the background. Um, and again, because we're drawing this at string X, if we decided that we wanted to change this to now 20, you know, one of those strings will move over. So this is quite like um, flexible if we wanted to change anything. So this is a good start. Alrighty, what is next? Um, I suppose we should start drawing some B. Oh, I should, should make a note before we get on to the next thing that this actually won't work for capital letters because only checking is the lowercase q being pressed. So if we did want to make it capital as well, we have to say key is equivalent to capital Q as well using the or. <clears throat> but just for now, save time, um, I'm just going to do lowercase. Okay, so let's create some dots to be our beat. So this time, instead of using an integer to represent like the x and the y, I'm actually going to create a p-vector. A p-vector is another type of compound data um, that just contains, if I just move this over here, p-vectors just have two values in it, an x and a y. This is the x and this is the y. And that's quite convenient to us because if we can store some coordinates like this style, say 10, 20, then when I want to draw something, or if I want to say I want to draw my p vector, I can just use p vector dot x, p, dot, p vector dot y, and it will give me that exact position. Um, obviously not with that exact wording, but it, it will be helpful for what we need, so that's why I will be using it. Okay, so p vector 
array. Let me catch my breath again. Obviously not exercise since the start of quarantine. Uh, P vector array uh, dots is going to equal a new uh, P vector array of how many? I um, actually don't know how many dots we need, so I'm going to say 20 for now. And um, this can always be changed. In fact, I might want some kind of um, you know thing to count how big this is, so I can say num dots int num dots how many dots do I have let's make that 20 I'm just throwing in another variable for the sake of it I think but you get the idea okay so basically what this gives us oh that's OBS what this gives us is a an array of 20 so I'm just going to say dot 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 zero oops one, two, where at each of these spots we have the ability to hold an X and a Y value. So it's kind of like we got an array within an array, compound data within compound data. So we're saying that one of these dots at index, say index one, this one here, we can say um, get that X or get that Y and it'll give us one of these. Okay. Um, so first let's give them a position um actually we can do, what should we do first yeah let's do that okay so um we have to go through a, we have to loop through and basically give each of these dots an x and a y position so for int i equals zero i is less than um and i could say num dots here <laughs> num dots or I could use dots dot length pretty much the same thing here um, I plus plus and the reason I have to do it in setup is because I'm going to be using it in draw and I don't want to initialize it every single time so it's just a good idea to do it up here um, and at uh, sorry then we have to say um, so this is our array dots um, dots I so at the index that I'm up to in this P vector, so the first one, I want you to make this a new P vector, capital P, um, that has the X value, oh, let's just say 10, <laughs> and a Y value of 20. I don't know what they're gonna be. But what this means is that every single dot now Again, bringing up OBS. Um, every single dot now will have the exact same value of 10, 20, 10, 20, something like that, right? Um, obviously, this is not what I want to do. I'm just using that as stand in values. So, what do we want to do? Um, let's have a think about that because what's going to happen is we have our strings. Um, let's illustrate. We have our buttons down here, and then we've got dots that are gonna travel down the screen, down this way. But if this is the top of the screen, we can't really keep spawning them. Um, so instead I'm gonna make the illusion of spawning them and actually just randomly generate them above the screen where you can't see. And so as they travel down, it's gonna look like they're appearing out of nowhere, when really we have all our dots stored up at the top above our screen. So to do that, um, we'll leave the X position for now, but the Y one, we're gonna say, it's gonna be some random value um, between zero and, or maybe not zero, let's make it some random value between negative 400, like 400 pixels up, um, and negative uh, 20, say. So it's just gonna be somewhere above. Okay, um, and for the X position, yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay, so uh, now that we have our dots starting somewhere, let's create the code for moving them down the screen. So remember before we have the code for the strings, then we have the code for the buttons, and I want the dots to be between that because of the order that processing draw things. I want them to be above the strings, but below the buttons. So let's iterate through all the dots. For int i equals zero, i is less than dots dot length. 
I++. You guys should be used to this format by now. All of these things are exactly the same. This is getting us from the start of the array to the end of the array one at a time. So again, if you're struggling with the idea of iterating through an array, I'd recommend just memorizing this and then understanding it later. Okay, so we want to draw a circle. Um, oh, I will say ellipse. Ellipse at the position. Um, it's a p-vector, so dots at index i dot x, dots at index i dot y. Um, and then what's the size of this dot? Uh, probably 30, 30. I don't know if this is going to be good or not. We can always change it. And then we want to make it move down the screen so I can see it. And, and for that, I'm going to make a speed variable. So int, oh, let's make it a float, float, speed equals, oh, let's make it an int. I don't really have any reason to make it a float or an int. Um, I'm just trying to keep it consistent. So int um, speed equals two. Two is good. Okay, um, and then this is where I'm drawing my dots. After I've drawn the circle, I want to move it down the screen. So we're going to get dots i, so the same one we're accessing, dot y, um, plus equals speed. And it's just going to move down. So let's let's play this. So remember what we've done. What we have made some dots. We have given them positions, so they're all going to be at a 10x um, just to start with. And they're randomly going to appear above the screen. There's a screen, they're abo appearing above, so we won't see them. And then we're drawing them and making them travel down. So let's watch that in action and hope it works. Which it does. Okay, that's cool. So they're all a bit bunched up together, but that's okay. Um, and they're all at the 10. So let's fix that X now. So I'm going to do some sneaky maths. We're going to create just just so I can space it out and you guys can see we're creating a new variable that's going to determine which of these it's going to pick so we're going to have like a random generator that's going to pick one of these values so let's make it int rand index it's a random index and it's going to equal um, random somewhere between zero and the length of this. So let's say um, string x dot length. In fact, just to make it easier for you guys, the length of this is four, so I'm just going to put four and we'll go through why this works in a minute. So what does random four give us? So um, if you put in random four, it's going to give you any number and that includes floats as well. So it's going to be decimals between zero and 3.99999, etc. forever. Um, and then because this is an integer, and this will give us a float, I will use a function floor. Now you can also cast to integer, but because floor is inbuilt, um, it's just going to make it easier for me to use, um, or just easier to explain. Floor basically turns an, a float into an integer. So if it's 3.999 something, it's just going to cut off that decimal part and make it equal 3. So in the end, what this is going to give us is 0, 1, 2, or 3 at a random point. So we don't know what it's going to be, but it's basically just going to randomize. Pick one of these. Okay, so now we've got random index. Let's say the x value for our dot um, is going to be a string x at a random index. So now if we press play, we should be able to see the dots falling along the strings, which is awesome. That's what we wanted. And we can space them out a bit more by saying negative 600. And they're going to appear a bit more spaced out. We can add more dots because we've got num dots here. Let's make it 50. Yep, definitely more dots there. Um, let's set that back. And it might be nice just to add a color to them, to be honest. So when it gets to drawing the dots here, let's add a color. So fill... Let's make it like a pink or something. Color selector. Yeah, that'll do. So let's just copy that. Hey, there we go. 
We could also um, space them out a bit more. So if we wanted to have them evenly spaced, we could do something like this where we have, um, where we're initializing it. Instead of having random between negative 620, we could use our trick before where we use floor and pick a random integer. So I'd have floor a random number between um, one and let's say 40 and then multiply that by negative 40. Um, so, or maybe, maybe negative 40 is too much, negative 20, let's say. And then that way, oh, that's not right. Let's make it negative 60. And that way they should appear evenly spaced out. Oh, it's a bit not obvious enough there, 30. This is why it's good to have variables to see the numbers. 40. Let's make it um, 30 here. Okay, so you get them more like in line like this and it looks more like a rhythm game. But obviously, if you're just following this tutorial, using random is just fine just to determine where it's going to start. Okay. Um, now, what should we do? We should have a way to reset the dots when they hit the bottom of the screen because at the moment when they hit the bottom they don't reset that's it that's the end of the game so we want to have a way to put them back at the top um, so for that every time we draw a dot we increase it by speed and if dot i dot y so if the y value of that particular dot is more than the height of the screen um, and I do want to say height plus, you know, a bit, a bit more because um, I don't, I don't want it like cutting off when we got just half the circle on the screen. And because these are thirty in di in uh, diameter, I'm just going to say plus fifteen to make sure it's completely off the screen. So if if it's completely off the screen, uh, I want to reset the dot. Um, and to reset the dot. Let's create a function that resets the dot. We can either do that or we can just say dots i dot y equals actually that just might be easier. Dots i dot y equals uh, or minus equals they're all like negative um, let's make it divisible by 40 so that it looks all even and the screen Actually, I would like a reset dot function because I do have to, I want to randomize the X so it gives us some variety. So reset dot <laughs> um, and let's create a function that does that. So um, what's this, uh, what's this function going to return us? Nothing. So we can put void. All it's going to do is move the dot back up to the top for us. Void reset dot. Um, and I want to make this it takes in a dot, so it needs to take in an i. Um, or I'm just going to say int index because dots is accessible from everywhere. So as long as it has that index, it knows which dot you're talking about that you want to reset. Um, and we want to take that uh, y value, or so both the x and the y. So let's say dots um, i equals, and then we're just going to give it this again. That actually might be the easiest thing. So we're just, it's just like resetting it like new. It's exactly the same thing as it started with. Um, and I, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Maybe instead of resetting all the way back up to 30 times 40, um, maybe we just do 10, space it out or f five. Um, and this is now called index. It doesn't know what that is. And random index, it doesn't know what it is because we used it up here. So I'm just gonna copy them. Copy and paste this random floor code. Is it happy now? No. Um, can't do floor. It doesn't know what it's doing. Okay, instead. What have I done wrong? 
Oh, it needs to know which string X to go into. Yep, so we give it a floor of a random five. Okay, that's fine. Can't invoke floor float on primitive type int. So it think that something else is an integer. Okay, the X equals um, some random value here the string x array dots at index y is going to equal um, something that's at the top so I'm just gonna say minus equals our, our height of our program is 600 maybe let's make it like minus 640 or something keep it consistent Minus equals 640. <laughs> um, and then our reset dot needs an i, so let's just give it the i because it's asking which dot are you talking about? And I'm saying this one here. So if it's more than the height, then we reset the dot. Okay, let's just watch and see if this worked out. The beauty of uh, not editing the videos that you create is you're saving a lot of time and you get to see my mistakes. So maybe you guys can learn with me. Okay, so we, it appears that we have a continuous stream of dots now, which is very cool. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. Um, our buttons still work here. Let's just make them work now. So um, I have to think about what is the best way to make sure the buttons work. Hmm. Well, we could make a function to test if something's been hit. So um, if you think about like game development or even games in general, if you hit something, you hit something called the hit box. So we're going to kind of create this illusion of a hit box using ifs saying if it's more than this value and less than this value, then it's been hit. So um, set up, draw, let's have the buttons. Um, When you guys are doing this at home, obviously feel free to try and optimize what I do, but I'm going to do a horribly inefficient way, but a way that works just so I can get through this video. Um, so what we're going to do is when we are maybe, maybe at the end, when we want to update a score at some point, um, not, we're going to do it inside draw. So here's draw. We're going to have a nested loop to check if a button is hitting a dot. So we're going to have for int i um, equals zero, i is less than um, dots length. So it's going to basically, the first loop is going to go through all the dots. Then the second loop is going to go through all the buttons for int i j equals zero and we have to do j because it, it already knows what i is and we can't use it again if uh j we're going to keep going while j is less than um buttons um dot length and then we're going to say j plus plus okay and inside this loop we want to check if um, if the dots have hit. So what does that mean? Um, or let's check if the button's down or not. So if um, button buttons J. So if the if the button we're looking at is true. So we can just have that. And um, we want to check the dot is in that column. So Um, dot oh sorry string x j so if the button we're up to position the x position of that button is equivalent to the dots x position that's the next thing to check and um, the y position of that dot is within reach so um, dot 
I think this is sorry, this is supposed to be dots. Dots i dot y plus oh, sorry, um not plus is more than the button y. Um I think that was our yep, yeah, buttons y. And the y position is more than the buttons of the y minus the width of the buttons, give or take some. So let's just say 30 for now. Um, and let's make it also have to be le uh, less than the end of the button. So it has to be between, sorry, if this is our button here, it's a very crude drawing of a button. Um, and the dot is here, it's not gonna get hit. If it's here, it will get hit. If it's here, it will get hit. And if it's here, it will not get hit. It will count as a miss. That's what we're doing here. So we got the, this is why we have all these ifs to check. <laughs> so we're saying um, if the i position, sorry, if the dot we're up to, dot's i, y position is has to be less than the button's y position plus give or take 30. So plus the half of the width of the rectangle plus a little bit to make it look easy. Okay, so if it satisfies all these conditions, then the dot's been hit. Dot is hit. And what do we want to happen? We want to reset that. And luckily we have a void reset dot. Oh, sorry, a function called reset dot. So reset dot, um, and we want to give it dot i. That's what we're up to. Reset dot i. Okay, let's give this a go. Uh, we got missing a bracket somewhere. There you go. Um, we are using something it doesn't like. Oh, sorry, it doesn't like that we're trying to add 30 to an array. Um, we are trying to say buttons Y. Buttons Y is that integer, and we can add 30 to an integer. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so here come the dots. I can press things, and let's just check. Do they disappear if we hit? Yes, we do. So let's only hit this one here, the, the E key, and everything else should stay, and only the E column will disappear. In fact, we could just hold down everything and they all disappear, right? Or if we let them go a little bit further, we still count as a hit. So that's really cool that we got that. Um, and if you're trying to improve this at home, you can either make a more efficient way of doing the loop, um, or maybe make it you can't hold down everything at all and you have to press them one by one, or maybe they could change color if you miss them. Or maybe if you hit them, it says, good work, you got it. <laughs> the last thing I'd do, just as a small bonus, is maybe let's add a score. So int score and it starts at zero and every single frame when we draw the background let's also print out the score to the console just to see how we're doing um, and if we uh, if we have to reset the dot because um, it's gone past the, the whole screen we've missed it so score minus equals uh, 50 we lost 50 points we missed the dot but if we hit the dot, dot is hit, let's say um, score plus equals 100. Okay, um, and now we're seeing our score down here. It says zero. We hit one, it goes up to 100. We hit a couple. Our score goes up, we're really good, and we keep missing some, and the score goes down. Um, and that's the end of the tutorial. So <laughs> let's th talk about some things that we could add to make this better. Um, you could have different colors. You can add music. Music requires an import and it's a bit outside the scope of this course. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, you could add letters to the keys. So you can see Q, W, E, R. Again, text, bit outside the scope of the course. Not going to worry about teaching it, but I would encourage you to explore it on your own. Um, for those of you who are a bit more advanced, um, doing some pr preparation for Comp 1010, um, you can look into turning these into objects instead of having arrays for all the dots. But for, for the scope of the uh, Comp 1000's course, ignore that. Um, you could have it say words of encouragement or flash if you do something great, or maybe when you hit a high score, it tells you you're fantastic. You could have the dis score displayed on the screen. Um, yeah, there's lots of things you can add here. 
And I really encourage you, if you are following along with this, try and make it better. Try and make it unique and your own. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this, because I enjoyed making it. So thanks.